Welcome everybody to the regular town board meeting for Thursday, May 28th at 6 p.m. Um, in the in-house, we have Mike Dashino, Dave Train, Dan Zano, Bob Hannon, Brian Seaman, Bill Conrad, uh, Garfinkel, Jason Myers, Bill Guyden, John Jacoby, and myself here in the in the building. Uh, Al Bax is on Zoom. And Tom Siemens on Zoom. Tim Masters is here. Uh, let's see, Jackie Nell is here, Jeff Ritter, and uh, Mr. Colton. Frank Fox? Yeah, Frank, Frank's not on his own. Okay. I know Frank's been extremely busy, so. Um, so I'd ask everybody to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The two republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I would ask for a moment of silent reflection, and I know everybody's aware of the terrible tragedy the other night, Tuesday night, uh, with the BBC in the brickyard, uh, Steve, Ken, and Eric. Uh, please keep them in your thoughts and your prayers. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda approval. I move we approve the agenda. There's nothing to add. Did we have to? Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add? No. Um, Bob, did you want to add something? Was, your, was the bids on here? Oh, no, the bids were not yet. So, under engineering. If uh, A and B go, I would bring up. Uh, Award of the uh, contract to Melbourne for the Wild Okay. And under old business, I'm going to put the uh, paving at Colonial Village. Do we have to say old business on the document? We have to sign? Yeah. Old business for days. Are you trying to what is your set number? 284. Back to the other department heads. Um, and under Tim Masters, I'll have Tim, I'll have you bring up the uh, application for the special use permit when we get to the department making decisions. Okay. So, uh, agenda approval? Move for approval as amended. Second. There's a motion, a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Bill Max. Yes. Uh, Bill Guyton? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. And Jason Myers? Yes. And yes from the supervisor Robert. Steve, before you move on, I'm going to get feedback here. Is that normal? Does everybody else get a little feedback? What happens is sometimes you pick up my microphone. Let me turn this down a little bit more. There's like a fine line. I'll try to keep it on mute until you talk. No, I am not. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's on mute except for myself. So, um, uh, is there a part of the that you want to say that they all came in wearing our masks? We're sitting social distance apart, we've taken our masks off. Yes, thank you. Um, resident statement Steve Lott, do you want to speak? Where would you go? Yeah, go ahead.
Thank you, Steve. Okay. Um, Thank you, Steve. Sorry, I was muted. Um, Mr. Coltman, did you want to speak? No, I don't. Okay, we have nobody else here to speak to that. Um, Department of State. Donna? Nothing. Nothing from Donna? Bill Conrad? All set. No. Bob, you're on the uh, agenda. Brian, you're on the agenda. Dan, anything? Come, come on over here. Um, I told you about this a couple weeks ago. I would like uh, permission to rehire my summer help starting in July. Uh, Matt Johnson, he was here last year. I'd like to bring him back again for our summer help. What's the rate? Where's the rate? Right I think the rate's $15 an hour. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Move to approve uh, the water department hiring their summer help, one employee, and $15 per hour. And the name is? Matt Johnson. Matt Johnson. I second that. We have a motion of second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Now we're down back. Yes. Bill Gadden? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Supervisor Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Trang? You want to address the key? Yeah. yeah. We'll move into that. First, I'd like to add, we spoke on, it was presented before you about the 284 agreement. I need it voted on and approved at this meeting so we can go on with that. As, as per our discussion two weeks ago, I move for approval of the 284 plan as presented by David Trace on the superintendent. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, we'll call the call for now that. Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. And Jason Myers. Yes. yes. And myself, my brother, uh, yes. Do you remind the back to just come in and sign the four copies for me? Yes. Yes. Um, Stevie, can you speak at the microphone and I'll make it in the YouTube recording? It was basically to sign the 284 highway uh, paving project that we approved or we Read at the last meeting, but we failed to vote on it, so we had to vote on it. Okay, I'll be I'll be clear about uh, before we vote. Okay. Before we move ahead, can we get verification from Jennifer that when you call on us, our green light goes on? Because I'm talking right now, my green light You're is on. Muted. So I have one. I'm muted again. I I didn't see Jason's light come on, but he spoke. Jason, say something. Um, no, no. There it goes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we have three right on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. In that 284 agreement, I'm doing North Klein. Right. At the end of North Klein is Colonial, what do they call it? Colonial Village Park. There's a parking lot there that needs to be milled and paved. It costs us approximately $9,000. I prefer to do it now part of this whole project. And I talked to Mike Dashenow and Jackie. We feel that the money's there, it's available. It's better, it costs as much money to do it now, and I will be running the equipment over a freshly paved road. Yeah. So yeah. I want to explain our story. So Dave Trent is talking about the uh, paving at the Colonial Village Park. We talked about it at the last meeting. It was about $9,000. We were going to follow it to see if we wanted to do it. What Dave's recommendation is to pave it. This is going to be the cheapest it's going to be. Um, he's, he's paid the North Klein Road, and next year if he did it and it brought the equipment back up there, it would be double the price. So he's recommending paying it at nine thousand dollars is as cheap as it's ever going to be. So Go for approval of uh, paving Colonial Village Park uh, parking lot for approximately nine thousand dollars. Money coming from H ninety one, the park H sixty one. I think we're going to do it. I think it was going to change. What we were talking about doing, and it, I called Jackie. Jackie, are you there? Yeah, we're Okay, I talked to uh, Mike Dashnell earlier, 
He wanted to see if we can pay it out of A7310.400. Yep, those kind of questions, if there's a possibility. Is it recreation? Yeah, it's a re recreation contractual. Okay. Then, okay, good, thank you. Okay. So, that, uh, move to fund it out of A7810. 7310. 7310-400. Move for approval at this time. If by some chance it changes, we'll come back. Okay. So we, have motion. we have a second by John Jacoby. All in favor, Al Max? Yes. Bill Gavin? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And Steve Brothers is yes. Good plan, David. Okay, thank, thank you me. very much. Thank you, Dave. Thanks. Mark Dash now. Uh, I submitted you guys a letter. You uh, want me to read the letter in the record? I yes. So it's not your duty today. Uh, May 1st, 2020. Uh, uh, no, let me, let me read it. Okay. Because Steve can't hear you talking. So Mike Dash has a uh, microphone right now. He submitted a letter to the town board dated today. It says, Honorable Members of the Lewis and Town Board, on May 1st, 2020, the town of Lewiston canceled or postponed all recreation programs for the month of June in accordance with state and CDC health guidelines dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. While we have begun progressing through the phases of reopening essential businesses, the state has not yet specifically listed youth sports or summer camps as an essential business or service. While groups have attempted to shoehorn their desired activities into phase four recreation, the state has given no guidance on what a safe opening would look like and has given us no indication of what the determination is coming. With this, most towns and villages surrounding the town of Lewiston have taken steps to cancel all their summer recreation programs. These include the towns of Wheatfield, Niagara, Porter, and Cambria. In addition, events that are likely to create gatherings and extensive travel have also decided to shut down for the summer. This includes the Porter Cup, Jazz Fest, Art Fest, Niagara Pioneer Soccer, Niagara Wheatfield Lacrosse, and the Erie County Fair. I feel that the town of Lewiston should now follow suit and terminate all summer recreation programs, including our house baseball and softball leagues, summer camp, summer swim, basketball league, and the Lancer Classic baseball tournament. This is not a recommendation that I take pleasure in giving, but I feel that it is in the best interest of both the town of Lewiston and the health and safety of our residents to follow every guideline put in place for public safety. And that's my guess. Um, so I guess. We should vote on it and um, uh, move for approval as presented for discussion. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Okay, we have a second. Um, so basically, we're going to uh, shut down recreation as we've traditionally run it over the, the last years. Yeah. And after stage four is opened up, we might have to revisit this with the option of doing some limited oh, I mean, some limited activities. Then in that case I'm in favor of this. Just after phase four is, is presented, we might come back. Oh, no. so, I mean, you're muted so yeah he's yeah he's he's muted. Hold on, he's good. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. All right. So I I said I support this idea. We're going to close down all of our traditional recreation programming that we've done the last so many years. But then after phase four is is presented to us and our recreation director has some guidelines, we might come back and visit it and have some sort of activities going on. Most likely we're going to be number limited in, in numbers of participants. We may not be able to do anything, but I would like to keep an open mind and maybe think about what might happen come even September, then we can still run some programming of some sort. That's not what I'm understanding what Mike's asking for, and that's not, I'm, I'm, I agree with Mike. Mike and I talked today. Um, basically, at this point, I'm in favor of just canceling all this. Right, we, and I agree. We're going to cancel right. everything. And that's it. It takes care of the whole summer. Yes. But 
after phase four, I'm going to come back to you and say, can we think outside the box? Is there anything that we can do to uh, provide a little bit of uh, recreation activities? We may not be able to do anything because if the number says 10, it, it won't be possible. But just giving you the heads up, there's a future out there. Hopefully, we can do something. Well, yeah, it's just so yeah. like we're dangling a carrot that doesn't well, exist. I'm, I'm eternally optimistic. But uh, I will we were well, we were eternally optimistic that we are the last town basically to do this, and I think it's come to a point where we've got coaches that need to know, we've got people that need to know about. Um, am I on? Yeah, no, I'm muted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have coaches that need to know. We have parents that need to know that there's no recreation program. So I, I just, I mean, yeah, we can always revisit it. But okay, so right now they're shutting everything down. Right now I agree with you. They're shutting it down. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we have a motion. Yeah. Do you want do you want to second it and we'll discuss? Well, I'll second it with the discussion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. We have a discussion. I'll give everybody an opportunity. So I'm going to mute again when John wants to talk. And I got to remember that moment. I think, uh, Mike, I just briefly. This is the programs themselves. The parks property will be open and be available for recreation for kids, for adults, subject to whatever rules are put in place by the state. Absolutely. Subject to the state guidelines. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the state will allow us to do, that's that's rule. And I also wanted to say that uh, I frequently walk in the area of Plexi Park. It's looking really, really good. Thank you doing a great job. I appreciate that. Okay, thanks. I'm what John said. You got to be on me. It's a new world. It's a new world. I didn't I say anything. No, it's no green. <laughs> yeah, you, you're still <laughs> muted. Jennifer, you're back? No, you're still <laughs> muted. <laughs> now, please. Okay. Uh, I was talking yesterday at Hyde Park. And they were very clear with their signage that they had out and about. I have not visited all of our parks, but I think the signage should be very clear about the equipment. The equipment is not being sanitized. No. So parents need to know that. If they come there with their child and the warning tapes are down, the, the equipment is not sanitized. Simply as that. Is that, is that doable? Sure. Right now they're closed. Uh, yes. right, now they're right now they're taken off. But we're seeing the parks are open. And uh, if somebody goes over to the Quadis Park and walks around, again. Jennifer, I didn't touch it. Sorry. 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 Uh, so if somebody goes over to Quadis Park and they walk around the park, when they play tennis, and they have the child visit, and the child goes over on the equipment, we're not sanitizing the equipment. And I think that should be clear. No basketball. Well, that's according to. That's according to the state's guidelines, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what you I just muted yourself. Mm -hmm. You were you were you were good. That's that's what I was saying with the uh, subject to the state guidelines. You know, the parks are available subject to what they say with the state I agree with the sign. So all agree that just as long as the signage is clear. Uh, we 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 have a plan in place too for the for the next couple phases of openings. Uh, we just kinda of discussed today, I haven't really discussed it with the supervisor at all yet, but there are sanitizer, there's sanitizing protocols that the state is putting out that we think are going to be pretty easy to follow. Um, whether we continue, whether we want to follow those guidelines and open up, like say, the playgrounds, um, it's it's um, might be as simple as spraying it down uh, once a day. Um, you know, we'll we'll discuss that as, as we get closer to it. Well, Steve and I talked about possibly doing something like this. Yeah, there's no the guidelines. Yet. Uh, they're there. They're, they're out there. Um, if you look at the Empire State Development, uh, they, they have different. Uh, you have to put your whole plan in, um, and it basically tells you, you know, what they're looking for as far as sanitizing. Um, I believe the playgrounds is going to be phase four. Um, I'm not 100% on that. I think that what, what, what they're restricting on is large gatherings, bringing in people from outside, but recreation is specifically listed in phase four. It just doesn't give you, like, youth sports in that. Uh, without youth sports being, being recognized or summer camps being recognized specifically like some of the other states have done, you don't have a bad You don't have any sort of you know, uh, uh, foresight 
you know, like I said, a lot of other groups are trying to shoehorn, well, you know, this fits here, this fits here, but until the state comes out and says, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't, you're at a standstill. Especially with also the Lancer Classic, our, our terms are scheduled uh, in five weeks. You have hotel stays, you have people coming from all over the area. We don't even know if we can open our families. Um, so it's it, it, it's very hard for us to, to, to guarantee or even hope for uh, an event at that scale and then cancel last minute. These are hard events to cancel last minute. Even though they make money. We're, we're all in agreement. We're waiting to find out what the next steps are. But as, as far as your point, yes, when the, when the state guidelines come, come out, that might be an opportunity for us to sit down and see how recreation can serve the public. Um, I, would, I would suggest that we kind of take a look at it at a, at a you know, at the budget as well, and make sure that the programs, if we do decide to start something, will be kind of revenue neutral. Because uh, speaking with Jackie, I mean, we're all kind of in agreement that we're in an emergency spending only type of, um, you know, type of situation. So, uh, well, yeah. the most that we have before us is that we are closing down a recreation program as we've done in the past. Yes, yeah. recreation and parks. Yeah. So, we have a motion and a second. Al, uh, anything you want to say? Anything? Yeah, I know, you know they, they've approved tennis, so our, our equipment is closed, our bathrooms are not open, so basically, you know, it's kind of a recreational area, walking and running and biking, and that's about it right now. Well, the tennis uh, courts are open. We've taped it off. We've had it taped off, and I think Mike's gone back three or four times and put caution tape off the clothes. And you know, whether it's weather or whether it's some people taking it down, um, I believe Mike's doing the best he can, and we'll just continue to do that. But I think the option of sanitizing the equipment every day is, is not a viable option, and we have to do it after every kid touches the equipment. So, yeah, I think we just kind of. I agree. I agree. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any more questions, Jason? Did you have any questions? Okay. Um, so we'll move it to a vote. Al Bax? Yes. Bill Guided? Yes. We got to unmute yourself. Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And Supervisor Brother is yes, unfortunately. Thanks, Mark. Anything else? Uh, just want to give the board an update uh, with construction opening back up. We're planning on going. Uh, the board has already approved this. But, uh, uh, right before the COVID crisis hit, we were approved by the Green Lake uh, uh, Commission um, for the construction of a new basketball court. I want to start. Uh, so uh, I'll be sending some stuff over um, to our attorneys to make sure we have all the prevailing wage documents attached. We're hoping to send out all the, our package out to bid next week. Excellent. Thank you. For anybody that couldn't hear me, talking about sending out the big package for the basketball courts. It's already been approved and funded. So, um, so under department head statements, we also have Chris McCullough has sent a letter. Please be advised the annual stormwater report is now available for public review at the town clerk's office and on the town webpage. So I don't believe there's any action by the town on that. 
just going to do the minutes. Um, and Tim Masters. Yeah, we discussed it. We are going to have the work session in June. I know John Jacoby's aware. I don't know if anybody else is, but we'll just confirm that everybody can attend. But um, so what Tim's talking about is basically the county planning board has been shut down. So we have five or six issues that are going to be coming up for the planning board in June, and it's imperative that we have a work session. So we'll, we'll take care of that when we um, move down the agenda a little bit. But uh, I'm going to refer to I'll refer to Brian since Brian's sitting here, Tom, if you want to jump in. But basically, it's a, it's a special use permit application for an existing roadside produce stand that's been closed for probably four or five years, if not more. And they have a tenant that wants to open it back up as a roadside food stand. Um, and we would like to move this along, um, try and help them get open what, by June or July. To, Hey Brian, do you think it's okay to schedule a public hearing? Not if it hasn't been to the planning board yet. Yeah, it's going to go to the planning board on June 18th. So when would the public hearing be? Tom, did you have a chance to look at it? So that means we would take no action tonight for uh, scheduling a public hearing. Okay. Now, Tim, in regards to the other issue with uh, having the work session, there was more than just this, correct? What would be the benefit of having a June 8th work session in regards to what's going before our planning board? Because the planning board obviously is meeting until June 18th. So what would we do on the 8th that would expedite the process? Or what if we move the June meeting from the 22nd to the 29th? What do you recommend, Tom? Right. 
so we can move the meeting to July meeting, or to, excuse me, June regular town board meeting to the 29th. What's your opinion, Brian? You I, I, miss, I missed most of that conversation. I, I didn't hear anything that was just said. Okay. But um, I mean, you just keep in mind you got to have a notice in the paper at least five days prior to a public hearing. So you have to have enough time for Don to get the notice to the paper and publish at least five days before you have a public hearing. So. Right. So what what they were saying is the June 18th planning board, there's no sense in doing a June 8th work session because anything that's going to go before the planning board on the 18th isn't going to be addressed at the June 8th meeting. So Tim, what Tim said was we either move our June meeting to the 29th or we schedule a July 13th work session. To take action on the things that happen at the June planning board. Yes. I mean, that makes sense. So you, have, you don't see any issue moving the, the meeting to the 29th and stick with no work sessions for the summer? Well, I don't know what business you have. You can change the meeting date. That's what you're asking. Yes, yeah. and you just have to do a, Don would have to do a notice that, you know, the meeting's been changed and put it on the bulletin board, put it on the website, circulate it to the, uh, the newspapers by fax or phone like she normally would. So, but yeah, you can change the meeting date. Okay. Let, let's be specific then. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Right. All right. Well, the board is on the 18th. Yes. Right. So if you move the 27th meeting to the 29th, that's more than adequate to uh, give five days for the notice. If they uh, schedule a public hearing on the 29th, we wouldn't be able to have it until uh, July 27th. That doesn't. We would have to come back at least July 15th. Yeah. Well, then, well, what well, if, by the time you get around to this, to be selling pumpkins. You could do a resol you could do a resolution authorizing the uh, the clerk to advertise for any public hearing they would recommend for approval. So, if it's any, you could do a motion tonight authorizing the clerk to simply notice public hearings for your next meeting for matters that are uh, approved by the planning board and submitted to you for final approval. Okay. And then she you know, we, Time is on our side now. We're not gonna have the June 8th work session. Correct. So let's make no changes now. Correct. And we can discuss it again, um, you know, if we're gonna change it. I, I think what, what the option would be is to add a July 13th work session and leave the meeting on the 22nd for what Donna said. So we'll take no action tonight on any future meetings um, until we get more information. Tim, I'll talk with you and uh, we'll sort it out. Because Tim was counting on the chance that this wouldn't go to the planning board. So um, does it not need the planning board approval? Tom, seems that your brother says it doesn't need planning board approval. So that's his opinion. So let's get to that. So I thought, yeah. I thought that was the whole point. Yeah. So we'll leave everything alone for now. And if we need if we need to add a July thirteenth work session, I have no problem adding that July thirteenth work session. And, but we don't have to do anything right now. So, so we'll leave the meeting on the twenty second. So if the July thirteenth work session would do that, they would vote in favor or opposed to a special use permit for that site. Well, I'm not sure. I'll talk to Tim what we have to do at that point. We may have to have a public hearing on that meeting. So yeah, the, if the planning but, board meets on Thursday. And agenda items have to be in by noon on Friday. They can submit that for the town board to call for a public hearing on June 22nd. They can call for it and then call for a, a work session on July 13th. So the public hearing could be held on July 13th. Yeah, and we could vote that night also to approve. Sure. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So we'll just leave it as is. We won't schedule a July 13th work session until everything kind of works out. Works out. We can do that at the next meeting. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Anything else, Tim? Yeah, I understand. Okay, thanks, Tim. Very unusual situation with uh, not having any of the boards meet and uh, you did. <laughs> I, I give up. <laughs> I think Jennifer's controlling my life here. Yeah. Phil just said this is just confusing times. That, you know, that's basically what he said. Okay, that takes care of department heads. I believe I got everybody taken care of there. Um, approval of meeting minutes from May 11th, 2020. 
Move for approval. You're going to tell me. Proof approval. Proof approval. Second. We got a second by Al Bax. We'll let Al chime in. So we have uh, Jason Myers and then Al Bax. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? We'll start with Al Bax. Bill Guyvin? Yes. John Jacoby? You're, you're good. Oh, you were good. You just unmuted again. Yes, I'm unmuting and she's unmuting at the same time when we're at cross purposes. Okay, you're muted, you're muted right now. So, John Jacoby's a yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay, Jason Myers. Yes. And Steve Roberts, a yes. So, uh, Bill Guyvin, audit payment. <coughs> One moment. Cheers. Move for approval of the Regular Abstract of Claims number 1051 to 1181, recommending the payment of the amount of $225,271.80 plus the post audit of $22,351.57. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, Al Bax. Yes. Bill Guyton. Yes. John Jacoby. Yes. And Jason Myers. Yes. Okay. New business, any residents or public correspondence? I think we took care of the old business. Um, I have nothing for my liaison report uh, legal. And this will be Brian. Brian's going to go to the microphone. Yes. We all voted yes on it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think there's no information. Yeah, we took the date training. We already, we already addressed it. So Brian's seen it the microphone right now. Okay, so uh, we're back here tonight, and we have a couple matters before the board concerning the water districts. And uh, as everybody's fully aware, we have been engaged in these special district proceedings, going through all of the uh, the fairly comprehensive proceedings that are necessary in order to increase the maximum amount to be expended to do uh, to, to establish and um, do the water line projects that we've been working on, uh, trying to get done for uh, three or four years now, at least. So, but tonight is the, the final night for with these resolutions. The first matter is to approve the final order. Hold on, Brian, hold on. Jason, unmute so everybody can pick up Brian on your microphone. You can try to join. Okay, so the, the first resolution before you tonight is a, a final order on the proposed increase in the maximum amount authorized to be expended in connection with the establishment of the town of and Water District. And this is increasing the maximum amount to be expended from ten million two hundred thousand to fourteen million dollars. The the final order itself is is lengthy. It's before everybody We've had it for uh, several days to review, but it basically goes through all of the steps we've taken in the proceedings to this point. And this is the final resolution actually authorizing this increase in the amount to be expended on the water district. So can I get a motion as presented or um, move for approval as presented by the attorney Brian Seaman. Bill Guyton made that motion. Do we have a second? Do I need to do it again? No, no, you're good. I'll yeah. uh, second. Seconded by John Jacoby. Um, do we have any questions? No, I'm, I'm muted. We have a motion by Bill Guyton and a second by John Jacoby. I'm asking for any questions. Now back to the questions. I do have some questions. Okay, John's got a question. Go ahead. Well, 
you know, Steve Lionel mentioned not putting these things out for bid. I'm in complete agreement with that. Um, you know, my position was pretty clear some months back. But tonight is not the time to address that. We, we, the contracts are awarded, and due to the delay, it's gone up substantially. And if we were to now start to fool around with them at this late date, putting things out to bid for engineering, it would be really in the worst interest of the town of Lewiston. Um, we saw what uh, speed it took to escalate the cost, and it would only go up further. So, um, you know, I'm not crazy about spending money, but I am crazy about not spending more than we have to. So that's why I voted yes. Okay, are there any other uh, questions on the matter? I go, I go back 15 years. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Jennifer? Oh, go ahead, on me. I go back when 2017, when we found the letter putting us on notice that the water line was inadequate and it had to be addressed. It's taken us a good five years to get this plug. I hope for no more delay. We can move forward with the project. Okay. Would anybody else like to speak to uh, Al? Jason? Yes, I think it's a good and I would be good things all here. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Al Bax? Yes. Joe Padden? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And Supervisor Roberts? Yes. Um, okay, the, the next matter is the actual bond resolution. This, this resolution is the, the resolution that allows the town to actually issue uh, bonds or buying anticipation notes to borrow the money necessary. Now we have a, a plan that was put together as to how the project is going to be paid for. If you'll recall, we do not plan to borrow any more money than we originally did, the ten million two hundred thousand, other than short term. So we we will have to take out a bond anticipation note to for the full, maybe not the full fourteen million, but up to fourteen million, and then it will be paid back. Part of it will be paid back through funds that we get through uh, our um, night line. So that was the plan as to how we would do it. But in order to even take out a bond anticipation note, you have to do a bond resolution. And that's what this is. So this bond resolution, uh, again, recites the necessary matters. And it's an authorization for the town to issue serial bonds up to $14 million to fund the water district project. What was the about right? Up to 14? 14 million. Yeah. Up to 14 million, even correct. We move for approval as presented by the uh, project attorney. We have a motion by Bill Guyton. Second. second. We have a second by Jason Myers. Uh, any questions? Okay, all in favor? Al Bax? Yes. Yeah. Bill Guyton? Yes. Jennifer apologized. Oh, okay, Bill's, Bill's muted, but he said yes here at the court, or here at the court, here at the town hall. John Jacoby? Yes. And uh, Jason Myers? Yes. yes. And Steve Rutter says yes. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. We're moving on to engineering. We're moving on to engineering. Bottom uh, line. Jason, I'll let you do the same thing for Bob. Okay. Are we okay here? Yeah. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, Tom Ward. Uh, there was a letter um, before you on day yesterday actually stating what um, the bids that were received all the way back in January 22nd of this year. Uh, it, it is, uh, the bid tab for those bids received, uh, four contractors submitted bids, uh, Miller's Construction, Mark Cerrone, Candy Company, and Acadia Site Contracting, those were the four contractors that submitted bids. Um, the grand total of the base bid plus both alternates uh, is submitted from Miller's Construction. Uh, 
and the total amount of eleven million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred ninety dollars uh, concluded uh, to the letter is a copy of the bid tabulation uh, articulating what the various unit prices were and so on. which sums up to that uh, that figure, and will be our recommendation uh, to go for the town board to award the contract uh, in the amount of eleven million seven hundred twenty-eight thousand. $290 to Millhurst Construction. Move for approval of Millhurst Construction of the amount of $11,728,290 as presented by our nominee Schmidt. That, that should, the motion should indicate that it's for the base bid plus alternate A plus alternate B. Correct. Right, I'm sorry, I'll feedback your base bid. Plus alternate A and alternate B. Yes, you want all three numbers spread in for the minutes? I'm sorry? You want all no, I mean, not all, but no, it just has to. Uh, Motion includes the base bid, alternate A, and alternate B for the total of the $11,728,290. I'm going to repeat that. We have a motion by Bill Guyman for the base bid plus the alternate A and alternate B for a total of $11,728,290. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Albax. Do we have any questions? All in favor? Albax? Bill Guyton? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And Steve Roberts? Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Bob, they, they want to break ground in July? Yes, they, they uh, we have been in, in communication uh, with uh, the owners of numbers and what my action somebody allows us to uh, get the contract ready for execution. We, we have certainly a month of June, it won't take that long, but we have a whole month of June to do that. And they've indicated they like to start the first week of July. Excellent. Okay. Do, are we allowed to give input as to what areas we want started first? Uh, we, have, we have done that in the bid documents and uh, it just so happens that the timing of everything uh, I think is going to put them uh, on pre code first right in front of school so we have a discussion and I think believe that's what their intention is. That's my yeah. question. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Finance, Jackie, are you there? Move for approval as presented. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Now back. Bill Guyton? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And myself, Steve Broderick? Yes. Tom, is there anything you want to add to that? I'll make the motion essentially the way Jack was saying. Based on attorney approval. Based on attorney approval. Do we have a motion? Can we get a second? Second. Bill Guyton seconded. 
Uh, any questions? Is that my Jackie, which fund does that go to? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Steve, Steve I've, I've read that letter a couple of times and it has me confused with the word annual in there. Uh, I know we get so much as a franchise agreement from the cable company, and this is 95000 short over how many years? Uh, I asked Jackie to look into it to see what we will be getting henceforth approximately and how that will reflect on our uh, revenues. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jason, did you vote though? I don't think you voted. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And myself, yes. I believe that everybody else voted, correct? Right? I thought we did. We, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, we have a motion to sign. I think we have a motion to sign. Okay. Al okay. okay. Bax? Yeah. yeah. I got lost in, lost in transi transition there. Bill Guyton? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. Jason Myers? Yes. And Steve Roberts? Yes. Thank you. Jackie, anything else? Okay, I know you sat down with Dave Train and already discussed paving and we've made some cuts there. Dave's been, you know, uh, helping and, and figuring out a way to, to do that. And people just need to be patient. I know a lot of people have complained about some roads here and there and we'll, we'll patch and do it the best we can, but um, it's going to we really need to tighten our belt. And I commend Dave for sitting down with Jackie and uh, uh, both Dave and Jackie and going over that and, and cutting quite a substantial amount, well over $200,000 on it. Paving budget for 2020. Okay. Anything else, Jackie? You should have ended on the good news. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Councilman Max, anything? No. Um, Fresh Brother has joined the group. Okay. In chief. Okay, Chief, uh, do you have anything? I know you've had a rough couple of weeks, but uh, do you have anything to report? That's great. I would commend all the first responders, the police, fire, for you know, the, fire, the fire they had at the BBC the other night, the two ATV accidents we had that were both fatals, um, the incident last night, which is very stressful, no matter how much you try when you close your eyes at night, you can't get that out of your head. And uh, I commend all you guys, uh, first responders, and uh, 
when all this is over, we plan on taking good care of you guys with, a, 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 you know, hopefully some type of a picnic or something where we can all get together and, uh, and release some stress. Anybody else want to say anything to the Chief? No, just thank you to everyone for their service. Bill Gavin says thank you. He's muted right now. He, he hasn't figured this thing out, so he says thank you also. It's not my fault. Jennifer apologized. Yeah. I heard it. He's on permanent mute. <laughs> only, only on the computer, though, not in person. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Yeah. Okay, Councilman Guyton. Very briefly, the uh, senior center has uh, still been functioning in part of the, uh, of Carol has been uh, management, managing the, our van to make sure that the seniors who need to go to the specific appointments, retina center, dialysis, a regular doctor's appointment, that's still functioning well. Uh, the town is no longer responsible for delivering the meals that's been taken over by the county. And uh, Carol's been reaching out to as many of the seniors as she can with telephone calls, cards, uh, just greeting, just to make sure everybody's okay. Uh, they have the food drive coming up this uh, Saturday to help uh, replenish the Ransomville food pantry. It's at, out at the senior center from uh, 9 to 1 on May 30th. If anybody has anything they would like to drop off or even some cash, it'll be used to, to replenish the Ransomville food pantry. Uh, the other thing that would come to my attention, there's no answering machine out at the senior center. And with not, the seniors not be functioning uh, full hours, it's something we need to address. Yeah, I was yeah, we're putting a new phone system in there. I want to see if that needs her services covered. So we're working on that. Uh, Amy's been, uh, Amy or Jackie. Jackie's been the communication with Spectre, but hopefully that they can address that soon. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Jacoby, anything? A couple of things. Um, one is the fire on Center Street. Obviously, I know there is not to fire, and uh, those guys did a heck of a job. But we have had informal meetings, just you know, brief conversations here and there. We did have a Zoom meeting for the uh, bicentennial committee the other night, and it went real well. Again, Jennifer, you know, she facilitates all this, and I think without Jennifer, we'd be kind of hurting. Uh, Zoom's not perfect, but she does a good job to make it work. And that's all. Thanks, Jerry. And I know, Ellie, you share those sentiments on the uh, fire company because they did a heck of a job. Uh, Councilman Myers, anything? Um, no report here. Just uh, one guy still going out for this. I got a first responder from the Thank you. Uh, resident statements. I got. I guess Steve Lyle. Would you want to say anything to wrap this up? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. Hold on. Tom Seaman. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I apologize. I, I, I was going to come back to you actually. Okay, I didn't know we were taking action on that tonight. My apologies. Bill actually showed it to me, and I said, no, we didn't do anything on that, so I'm sorry. Well, well, it's not going to be done. I don't think it's going to be done. 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 Jack, you want to add to that? Okay, so I would ask for a motion to 
to uh, set the manual journey and the new manual journal entry policy as presented. As presented. So moved uh, to accept it as presented. We have a motion and, and just a second. second. Uh, all in favor, Al Max? Bill Guyton? Yes. John Jacoby? Yes. yes. And Jason Myers? Yes. And Supervisor Brothers, so yes as well. Um, one of the, before we get to Steve Lyle, uh, Jeff Ritter, I noticed I, I, he zipped right by here. Do you have anything to add? Oh, you're, oh, you, there you are. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Steve Lyle, would you like to say anything? I don't know. We have, who, who's the AI phone? We have with one other person. I, I don't know who that is. So, okay. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, watch it. Thanks, Steve. Um, I want to add the one thing on the uh, Lewiston Senior Center food drive. I think Bill was muted. I don't, I'm not sure what he was talking about it. Um, but this Saturday from 9 to 1, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., we're doing a food drive for the uh, Ransomville County <coughs> Share Food Pantry. Um, this is the first food drive the town has done in a long time that we're doing. You will pull up. The volunteers will take the uh, donations out of your car. You don't have to leave the car. We'll put them directly into a vehicle and they, they get taken to the, the care and share and they get uh, cleaned and everything there. So it's real simple. But I also, uh, upon that, um, the Chamber of Commerce has their pantry outside. Uh, their, their donations got depleted this past weekend. So if you can help out both food drives, I know everybody has a, a big heart in Lewiston. I know everybody, the BBC's on everybody's mind. But if, if, if anybody can find it in their heart to, to give to either one of these great organizations. Our senior center, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And any time at the chamber, you can call. Jennifer's got a table set up and you can just drop those off. So I just wanted to, to repeat that again. Please add that we will accept cash in both. Okay. both in, in both the care and share and at the chamber, they will accept cash donations. I know I saw Susan Ragey from the chamber at the Sam's Club the other day buying supplies for the uh, for the tables. So um, and I know Everybody, the tops, and has them have all been generous. So uh, I appreciate anything anybody can do. So, um, Jennifer, would you like to add anything to that? I don't bl yeah, I don't I don't blame you, Jennifer. <laughs> we don't, but Steve you told you that you know. <laughs> <laughs> he said he said we, that he knows you, uh, I told you to do it, Jennifer. So with that, um Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank thank you, Jennifer. Um and I just want to say the upcoming meetings that have all been canceled for I believe March, April, and May. Um, historic Preservation is June 9th at 6 p.m. The Environmental Commission is June 9th at 7 p.m. The ZBA is June 11th at 6.30 p.m. And the Planning Board is June 18th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we have no guidance yet on if we can just keep them open to the public. We're actually kind of hoping that maybe by the Planning Board will be open to the public, maybe the Zoning Board. Um, and we have to get some guidance from the, uh, the state on those. Otherwise, it'll all be Zoom. So uh, with that, I, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Do a guy who uh, made the motion, John Jacoby second. All in favor? Al Bax? 
Your guide Yes. John Kobe. Yes. Jason Myers. Yes. And Steve Rogers. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.